I don't know what you're talking about, fire boy. I'm a sweet boy. Oh, okay. <laughs> sweet boy. Sweet boy. City boy. <laughs> They they try not to come to forty dollars. I'm dragging you. I'm fireboy. Alright, fireboy. So I mean, fireboy released his album Playboy. Yeah. Now that you've heard Playboy, what do you think about um, fireboy currently? I think fireboy has finally accepted the superstar status. Mm -hmm. He was reluctant for a while. Um, mm -hmm. So his first album was very love oriented, and speaking to where he wanted to go to, right? Yeah. First song is. I mean, the last one got that last time. Do you understand? Like, wait and see. I did come. Do you understand? Album became, album is one of the modern day classics. It's going to be one of the modern day classics, obviously. Then the second album, it was getting into the super. So the first one was Lover Boy. Second album, there's still some Lover Boy, right? But there was there were records like Afar or Lifestyle where all this lover, all this superstar shit, leave me alone. I'm not interested. Just leave me alone. I don't care about all these things. I don't, I'm not driven. Like, let it be loving me from afar. Do you understand? Like, this one that you're calling me, I'm not picking, you're complaining. Don't leave me alone. Do you understand? That was mostly the energy from this album. And then there was the energy of, um, he wanted to party, he wanted to enjoy his life, but still while being at home, New York City girl, right? I'm a champion, all of those things. But then the final record on the album was, Remember me, Timothy Love. Do you understand? It was a reluctant, it was reluctant to accept, accepting the super, it was reluctant towards accepting the superstar things, even though he was enjoying some, pro, some proceeds from the superstar that he had built for himself. But on this album, he finally accepted it. He's, he's living in it now. Like, his lifestyle has changed. The songs are literally telling us where it's coming from, where it's going to. Like, um, it's talking about he's traveling to taking trips now. Everybody's a shower. Like, he's go gone from New York City girl. So we're all a shower. You understand? Right? The first album was very moody. This one is not moody. It's not a moody album. It's, it's kind of very happy. Like, it's the earliest part of his victory lap. He's talking about going to Paris on a wing, right? The last track is also titled Glory. Do you understand? It's, talk, it's changing now. It's talk, on his first track, he's talking about the fact that he's drinking and he's high. Um, confess to not, to not smoking weed on Peru, but he's on Moli. Do you understand? Like, it's there. It's, everything is there. It's there. If you, want, if you, if you are attentive enough, it's, 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 all, it's all over the place, right? So, it's... Fireboy is finally getting into the rhythm of a superstar now. And I think that's what this album is about. Nice. <clears throat> now that you've heard the singles, what do yeah. you think about Peru, Playboy and Bandana? I think the, all the songs were meant to set a template for the album in, dif in different ways. Peru was obviously like he needed a hit single. Apology didn't exactly have a hit single. So he needed a hit, he needed baby. That will crack it open, right? Uh, but then the narrative of each of those albums, right? also was tying into what this album was about. So I feel like there are less singles than narrative builders. So I think in that way, I, I appreciate the singles. I, don't, I, I still don't particularly like Bandana. I'm still not the biggest one. But I can still, and I can I enjoy it better as part of the album, even though I, I'm still not the biggest fan. Playboy, I grew into it later because of, oof, I just like <laughs> To it, so I just like it, right? And then it's it's also like him finally admitting that I, I have many angles. I can also be a playboy. Like there's again, which is also part of because if you're a superstar like Fireboy that just had a billboard hit, you have a lot of women, bro. A lot of women across board. So it means that part of the, leading onto the album. So that's what I think it is. San Francisco jamming as well. San Francisco jamming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, creatively, what does Playboy say about the direction of Fireboy? Um, creatively, I'll, let's talk about the sound first. Um, it's a very exper it's kind of experimental. Um, it's, so the biggest thing about Fireboy, I tweeted about it like some days ago. Yes. The biggest compliment that Fireboy pays himself with this album is that he, nothing is the same. No one album sounds like the previous album. All the three albums he has released have been different. No single sounds like another single. He's not repeating templates. I don't know how he's doing it, 
but he's not repeating templates. This album is possibly his most experimental album sonically in terms of the types of beats he chose. I chose the beats of um, Glory, for example, or the track before Glory. This, I mean, what's that of that song? Having not, or what's what's that of that song? Maybe talk to the last track. Um, I can't remember the title. Let's talk to the last track again. Having fun. Having fun. Yeah. The sounds on those people are going to say he has done a record like Twenty Four on his previous albums. He's done a record like New York City Girl, Champion. Yeah. Yes, but the overall feel of those albums still have Bedu. This album doesn't have it. He has Bedu, maybe like Diana or Ashao or some other records. But still, the overall feel of the album is like Fabio is rapping. <laughs> he doesn't get better. He is rapping. The sounds, it also shows that there's also an international drive with it, obviously, science or empire. They want to make money. They want to make him into a star. He's not even in Nigeria half of the time anymore. It's not, I'm saying half of the time. 25% of the time, he's not in Nigeria, right? So it shows you that there's a drive to get him out of here. And then, I really, I, I think the album is it's not, so it's not as, I think the problem with the album is, it's not as great as a lot of, the huge biggest fans want want to think it is biggest fans of the album and it's not even remotely as not good as everybody thinks so it's somewhere in between great and good do you understand but the thing that will tilt it in his favor is number one if a narrative is created by because the era we live in is the era of narratives if a narrative is created by a really successful single everything is going to change so now people are going to enjoy the album better. A lot of people that were not listening to the album for what it was will go and listen to it. Just like Middle Lagos. Like a lot of albums have been like that recently. Like, that's what it is. So I don't think, I think on oh, this album is very, I can hear a lot of things, experimental things, like the sounds, the way it's delivering, the flow. I, I don't understand how that guy keeps switching flows based on the beat. I think that's one of his biggest blessings as well. So that's, that's what it is. All right. Um, some people might not, like this album, what, why do you think that is? Um, I think fans like to say that, oh my God, this artist has remained the same. But fans also don't know how to handle change, or a switch, or evolution. Mm. Fans think they, they do. They think they want it, but they don't know how to handle it. It's just that simple. Um, I, so that's, a lot of people that are, that are listening to this album are listening, they, they, they are not processing the, they don't like it, they are not processing the things that are different about the album in the best way possible. Do you understand? Yeah. Like the different types of busy, different approach. The fact that he's rapping. He's not a natural rapper, but he's rapping. Right? The fact that the album is also a mesh of like the different things that make a fiber right now. He's trying to go international. He's trying to appeal to urban audiences abroad. He's trying to appeal to Caribbean audiences. Chelsea, Chris Brown. Do you understand? Like all these things, he's trying to do them all at once. So a lot of people might not be able to process the different elements that form this album. It's just how a lot of albums are these days, to be honest, from superstars that are signed to global companies. That's just the way it is. So you can't blame, but I, again, I, I can't blame those people because it feels, some of them might feel alienated. But again, you can't expect things from artists. These days, keep your mind open as much as possible. If you keep your mind open, you are going to enjoy albums better. I mean, there are still going to be bad albums, don't get me wrong. But in this particular situation, just open your mind. Because I have a friend, let me call him up now, sir. A friend of mine, who in the morning when the album came out, said, nah, this album is not good. I, I can post the screenshot on my Twitter if people can ask him. By evening, they said, it's a great album. <laughs> you understand? So, it's just, literally, I'll show you the chat very soon. It's just what it is. Like, he was arguing, I had to call him on the phone, that chill, in the morning. Six hours later, I say it's a great album. Hmm. But I appreciate that because it shows that people can actually evolve. Yeah. So I think there will be a lot of people, when they listen to the album for what it is, they're going to enjoy it better. That's what it is. All right. And so for the people that like this album, yeah. why do you think that's it? Songwriting, bro. Fireboy's songwriting is one of his best traits as well. And the fact that he keeps switching flows and he keeps evolving. Um, Fireboy's songwriting, as we tell something on the day the album came out, he so it's not that his songwriting has the greatest slumber or has the greatest pop element or pop edge. It's just that the guy knows how to create impeccable flow schemes that fit particular beats. And then he knows how to articulate things that are honest in relatable ways. Fireboy says the most basic things, like, but it's just real life. Do you understand? It says, it says, or it says the most, the best things in the most basic ways. So that it's, it's so simplified. So that's why a lot of people don't know how to, to appreciate that. They want someone that's going to give them proper lamba that they can't understand. Like, it's not going to give you moody things. So people also need to understand that there, there can be different types of great songwriting. There can be people that will give you um, great lamba like Luji. 
There can people that are Omali that can give you street lingo and pigeon and everything. And there are people like Fireball who can just sit down and just ex express it to you the way it is. No complications. Do you understand? With great flows. So Fireboy knows how to find flows and pockets. Look at the way he find. Look at the pocket found on Playboy. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun, da, da. Like, that's a, po that's a wild pocket to find. And I think people need to give him more credit for that, to be honest. So that's number one. Number two, the fact that this track is not down, I really love it. I mean, I'll switch, I'll switch ha um, having fun as a 13 track. I think it's 14 tracks, right? 14 tracks. I'll switch having fun as a 13 track, and I'll, I'll switch payroll, the mix up. Um, and I'll probably not have put, uh, for streaming, maybe yes, definitely, I should have put it. Let me say that. Um, I'll, probably, I'll probably have made um, the second track, not come second track, maybe put it in the middle. There's a record like Diana for it, so that it sets the tone for. I think that's another thing that Fireboy needs to get right now, the track listing of his albums. The moment it starts getting direct, it will be fine. What do you think about Fireboy's ability to title his albums? I think he does one thing that he's, he needs to change as well. He doesn't know how to title his albums. That title of Goosebumps was a great title for the album. It was too long for the... F bro, it's too long. Right? My brother, find someone to title your album for you. Right? Because this album is not... It's not it's not exactly a Playboy album. It's not exactly... I mean, I get maybe the Playboy is a guy that's having fun and this... Yeah, I get it, but... It seems like it's at loggerheads with what the album essentially is. Even Apollo self, Apollo would have been better titled as Aloof. For real. Or Alone. Or Me. Because that album is, is a very, it's an album about individuality, mostly. And his essence has, or maybe you should have tied with the, Damola. Damola now. <laughs> or something. You understand? Like, I don't know. But laughter is a goosebumps. Yes, I, we had all those things, emotions. But maybe you should have tied with laughter or tears or goosebumps. Simple. Let's move on. So, but this particular people is the weirdest whatever. So, I, I, I don't think this album should have tied to No. That would have tied no, let me say it. Continue. Okay, so, talking about features on the album, do you think it needed more features? One thousand percent, more Nigerian features. But it's, it's also where Nigerian artists are right now because they are signed to foreign labels. They, the money is not here, so they need people that can make the money in foreign countries because tariffs are better there, consumer behavior is better there, purchasing power is better there. There's greater, greater streaming might there. But at the same time, I also need them to understand that they need to also keep steady on the home front because you can create you can create a record here that blows up with a nigerian feature and you can go there and create another feature of the song of the same song it's what it is right so i think that's what i, I, would, I would have loved to see more of that this is a song it feels like it needed a feature and i would have probably put bonaboy on timothy and i put bonaboy on timothy um and on a record like afro high life i'll probably have put someone that can speak proper yoruba on it Maybe someone like Brian Moore. Yeah. All right, so what's your, just speaking about Afro High Life, what's your take on Afro High Life? The, 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 the only flaw on that song is, is my, it's the deep cuts from, Fiber's, Fiber's albums always have deep cuts. From Laughter Tears and Goosebumps, it was Bass Bros. Bass mm. Bros. Shout out to the buddy that made me like that song, by the way. Um, track two. <laughs> Um, Apollo, the second album, the, so the so um, sound was the album cut on it, the deep cut on it. I think the deep cut on this one is, is Afro Life because it's so accomplished, it's so rich, it's so essential. The only problem is the genre misappropriation in this title. So, well, that song is not, it's not high life, bro. Come on. It's, it's, what is high life about it? It's an Afrobeat record. You can literally give it to Femi Kuti and he perform it for you. And the woman was shaking their bum bum behind it, you know? Like, that, that song is not high life in any way. And so, so someone was telling me that, oh my God, high life is the origin of, of Afrobeat. So it, maybe it was going back. I'm like, classical music is the origin of jazz and a lot of foreign American music. So are you going to call um, jazz classical music? Or are you going to refer to Quiet Storm as, as classical music? Bro, like I need people to just keep quiet sometimes. Stop embarrassing yourselves. Let's go on. Right. Well, like you said, I life is a progeny for Afrobeats. Yeah. Why can't you leave it at that? Because my brother, elements of when the the origin of a of a record, for example, of of a genre yeah. or a sound 
can be very different from the product. Bro, the progression, what determines a genre? What sets a genre up? And I, I, think, I think the problem here is a lot of people can't tell sounds from each other. That like they can't, I think music sounds the same to a lot of people. And a lot of people don't know what particular genres are. So they can't tell the difference. I think that's the difference between music heads and people that think they are music heads. I think that's the difference. And this is sad thing. So in this particular situation, this progression of high life and the progression of Afrobeats are totally different. The chord progressions are different. Afro, Afrobeat is way heavier than a high life. It's way more melodious. It takes a lot more instruments. And instrumentalists. Bro. Bro, there's funk in, there's funk in Afrobeat. There's jazz in Afrobeat. There's Afro-Cuban music. Not just high life. But you want to single out one element that might even get lost in the entire narrative. And call it that. Let's continue. What's your take on the record with Rema? Actually, I don't know why people don't like that song. I actually like it. I think Rema's verse was really good. Bro, and the way... I don't know why people don't like it. I love that song. It's top five for me on that album. No. Diana, Ashao, The Track One, Afro High Life. And this. Actually, top five for me. I don't know why people don't like it. I don't... I don't know. I think the record gives me the same feeling that I got from Overdose. So the first I heard, of, the day Overdose came out, and I remember the day where Excel and I and Chooks were going for my sister's wedding. And people were bashing the song, and I listened to this, I'm like, this is a jam. Why are you people dissing this song? It's a jam. So I think sometimes people, people diss things that seem familiar to them, because that song doesn't exactly seem unique. You understand? It doesn't seem fresh and new, like the, all the records on all the records on the album. So I think a lot of people are also judging it in perspective of the songs on the album. Because all the other songs seem fresh and different. But this one is the only one that seems like it can be, it seems like something that Rema could have done on his own. Do you understand? So I think people are judging it based on that. I think it's unfair. But for what that song is, I think it's a really good song. I, bro, I think it's a jam. I don't know what people are saying though. Oh my god, I think it's <laughs> all right. So, what do you think could be the singles from the album? Um, I think Asha Oak. Okay. Asha Oak is definitely the one that's taking off right now. And I, I don't, bro, I, I didn't see it coming, but I think Diana is, is obviously this the obvious thing. It's obvious, it's the post album single because it's an, it's an international artist right now, so they have to test those waters. And it's a really, it's my favorite song on the album. I think it's a jam, bro. I think it's an elite tracker. So, I think Diana. I think um, Asha, like I said, I think Timothy could be. They find a feature for it. Um, I think those three. The other one, streaming will decide. Yes. All right. How do you think this album could fare internationally? It could, it could do really well. It's all about promo and it's Empire, bro. They, are, they, are, they seem to have had. Empire is moving like a major, bro. That's what someone was telling me recently. He said, right now, I think I consider Empire to be a major, especially with the way they are moving with African artists. And I said, Okay. All right. How about Grammys? What do you think are the potentials for it? I don't think this. I don't think it's there yet. Sure. Maybe if if a song blows, maybe, and it, it also depends on the people that are in the academy these days. Right. It depends on how the, how successful the album is as well. Do you get? But I think they should submit it. You just never know. But if I were, if I were to predict, like personally, from what I think is the antecedent. Of the academy of the ac recording academy, no, I can't see it for now. For right. now, where do you think Fireboy sits now in his generation and bastion of Nigerian music? Um, I think he's ahead of his peers. Yeah, I think he's number one. And the wildest thing is that nobody saw it coming. At this time, he already has two really good albums, like. LTG is the best, is the is the classic because of its impact and all and its staying power. But I think Apollo is a better album for me. My opinion, that's only fact. It's my preference. I think Apollo is a better album. I prefer Apollo. Um, so in terms of what Fireboy could be, he's already ahead right now and he's constantly evolving, which is the biggest thing. So bro, the, the boy is limitless, and I think he knows that. Someone asked me a question before this album dropped, and he said, "Oh, if if he drops this album, would it, would it take him to? Would it mean that Fireboy is going to be A-list?" I'm like, regardless of whether this album fails or flops or, or is great, Fireboy is headed towards A-list regardless, because if he has successful singles, he's going to be fine. It's that simple. 
You don't release two albums like that as someone is saying. You are headed, you are going to be headed, at least, regardless of what you do. You'll be fine. That's it. That's it. All right. So, last one. Do you think Playboy is going to complete the trifecta? I don't think so yet. I don't think so yet. Um, I don't think I can declare that yet. But is it a candidate? Possibly, yes. Um, the album is good enough to be in that conversation. But it's not great enough to be accorded immediately. Does that make sense? So right now, it depends on what the album is going to be able to do between now and its next, and maybe the next five years. So if if we can have that, com if it does those things, then we can have that, that conversation. But it's, it's not like we are dismissing it completely out of hand. That mm, no, do you understand? Yeah. So we can say, okay, it, it's a candidate, but I can't. It's not something that I can accord immediately because it's not an, it's a, it's a polarizing body of work. Do you understand? The greatness of the album is polarizing. Not that. The, okay, the greatness of the album is polarizing. The conversation around the uh, conversations around the greatness of Playboy is polarizing. For a lot of people, it is. For us, some people, it's not. And those some people are slightly more vocal because a lot of people think the album escapes. But the thing is, I feel like when a lot of people start listening to the album for what it is, especially if it has a successful single, and you can come back with a narrative, it's going to be fine. And that's facts on it. <laughs>